So, uh, Gil, can you tell us about your fascial dissection lab and exactly what's a bit different about what you do? Sure. Um, well, for about 14 years now, I've been offering uh, six-day intensive human dissection workshops. And what's different about them is I'm not taking a regional approach. Uh, instead of the conventional approach in dissection where one would sort of reveal a particular section of the body and work through those tissues in search of uh, a wish list of structures that one might want to identify uh, for learning or a test, uh, my approach is instead to uh, dissect the entire body simultaneously by layer. So uh, in doing so, it gives an opportunity for uh, hands-on therapists to actually see what they touch because, well, uh, when one puts your hands on the body, first you feel that texture of skin and underneath it. You feel that clay, the superficial fascia, but it's almost impossible to see something like superficial fascia or even deep fascia demonstrated in its whole body continuity. So when I started doing dissection, I thought, wow, I have to try and come up with a dissection method that's coherent with the whole body philosophy of the kind of the disciplines of the people who come to my classes. Uh, and I was determined not to do a regional approach. Uh, but instead to drop through the whole body, layer by layer, and see what happened. It turned out to be really cool. Uh, well, you started out with the skin in superficial fascia, and I have vivid memories to this day of the actual entire skin of the human body displayed by Gil uh, on the dissection table, and the entire layer of superficial fascia displayed uh, in the same way. Uh, and I think you find that when your students uh, see that, that it really alters their ideas about what they're doing and why they're doing it. Do you find that that's the case if you go through the dissection with them? Ab absolutely. Folks are, have both their touch transformed and often their lives transformed because something like superficial fascia, the fatty adipose layer underneath our skin is so judged in our culture, it's an opportunity to appreciate it in its um, functional and physiological glory uh, in a sense and to say, oh my god, I don't have to reject that part of my body because my culture says so, I can instead appreciate it and from appreciation comes growth and personal transformation as well. When you get down to the deep fascia, uh, do you find it's difficult to uh, get away from the regional approach uh, as the deep fascia wraps around the, the structures that we've come to identify as individual muscles? Well, the beauty of my, uh, the beauty of my courses <laughs> is that uh, we have a team dissecting the body. So instead of leaving it up to one person or two people to be working on an arm, say, we have eight people at the table. So the whole layer is being revealed simultaneously. And you can just lift your head and look around the table or lift your head and look around the room and see um, a vast expanse of continuity in the deep fascia that would have been uh, impossible to achieve uh, without uh, no, weeks on your own. But if you have eight people uh, in teams around a table, uh, reflecting that superficial fashion, three hours is gone, and you see the next layer, and you see it in its continuity and wholeness, and you get that same aha, like wow, there it is. So, do you uh, work through the fashion right down to the bone in your class? In the bones, in six days. <laughs> it's a busy week. <laughs> Are you going to go through all that tissue in your DVD series as well? Yeah, uh, so far I have three volumes Skin of Superficial Fashion, the first, uh, Deep Fashion Muscle, in the second. And then the third volume I devoted entirely to the, to the complex of membranes that surround our viscera and central nervous system. So the fourth DVD will drop into the next fluffy layer, the viscera themselves. I'll actually leave the periosteum and bone to Dr. Acklin, who did a nice job on that. And uh, there's no need necessarily to reinvent something that people can see in its wholeness in a skeleton in their classroom. So I'll pretty much stop it at the visceral, and then I'll start moving into a slideshow, downloadable slideshows from my website, and that sort of thing, so that teachers will be able to access these images in a more usable format. Uh, my DVDs are very much uh, a story to be told. You can sit down, watch them from beginning to end, and follow their story. Uh, I think it's more accessible that way. As a teacher to myself, I'm really proud of your university. Yeah, I have a lot of work here. Yeah, okay, I won't hold my breath, how's that? I have a kajillion images, and it's just a matter of me organizing them in a way that creates more accessibility for teachers. Okay. Now, one of the things I noticed in your DVDs is that you have a really respectful attitude towards the embarrassing work, and a really respectful attitude towards people who are doing the dissection, the logic dissection, and the university is great to see the discipline because it is a very very conscious of the fact that when a person enters a lab for the first time, they essentially enter 
an altered state. And I figure if someone's in an altered state, I have to treat them that much more kindly and generously in a, in, in a way that appreciates them and can lead them forward rather than doing what happens in a lot of laboratory circumstances where people are traumatized by the circumstance, walk away feeling smaller rather than bigger. A lot of people walk away from uh, my uh, experience of me feeling uh, better than when I got there. And, um, I could attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and how did you get into this dissection of the first? Well, I did train as a as a rolfer some years back, rolfing structural integration. And while I was working on, uh, a friend was working on me actually, giving a session. And he said, blah, 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 your liver. And I was like, my liver? Where's my liver? You're touching my liver? If you're touching my liver, I must touch people's livers. Where, well, I've got to know more about that. So I have to do more dissection, that's where I can. Right. So I went and being uh, Dr. Headley, it wasn't uh, impossible for me to approach university and say, hey, I want to get out. Uh, I started uh, doing dissection. I invited a whole bunch of anatomy teachers to come, and uh, none of them came. So I was like, wow, I got a cadaver, I got a lab, what am I going to do? So uh, I just started cold calling offers until the class was full. That was my first dissection experience. <laughs> and now I, my first dissection teaching experience. I had snuck into the laboratory with a medical student friend years ago and uh, begun my, uh, my hands on experience there. Is your PhD in science? My PhD is in theological ethics. And that might bring you to. Kind of work as well. Oh, moral and uh, Absolutely, exactly. Yeah, uh, I think you bring that into your dissection. Yeah, I think if I had trained in anatomy in a regular university setting, uh, I probably would not have stumbled into the unconventional approach that I've taken. Yeah, that sounds quite likely. Well, thanks very much, Phil. My pleasure. Thank you very much. That's Phil Headley, and be sure to take a look at the link to his website to see more about his classes.